Hello, greetings. Glad to have you with us one more day. The Lord hath made. We're going to get right into the book of Lamentations. The prophet Jeremiah, if he was with us yesterday, we're going to not waste any time today. Get right into the message. I want to welcome you, first of all. So glad you joined us. And the Lamentations are written by Jeremiah also. and It's really a continuance. You might say the second book. And mm-hmm. lam- to lament is to cry. He was a weeping prophet. He had a lot of tears rolled, and we need to be crying today. We need to be crying for our loved ones, our friends and neighbors. We need to get people saved. I tell you, we're living in perilous times. God has called me to preach his word, and he has put me on this Facebook that I might preach his unsearchable riches and get you saved and to encourage you Christians uh, to press toward the mark and realize we're almost home. I don't know the day he's coming or the hour. I I don't even know uh, how soon it'll be. But I can tell by the signs of the time we're living in troubled, perilous times. Uh, And I'm looking with my eyes wide open. I want to read to you and I'm going to preach as we go through uh, a few, several verses today out of the book of Lamentations. Uh, uh, God was angry. You can make God angry. Don't ever uh, doubt it. Even Jesus got angry and he turned over the money table, uh, changers tables there in the temple. Uh, You can make God angry. And I believe that God is angry with a lot of the things that are going on. What about all these tornadoes? Uh, I mean, my, 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 storms, uh, viruses, uh, fires, earthquakes, uh, people are so ungodly today and living such wicked suicide. It's so sad, murder and suicide. Uh, we've seen it locally even here this last 24 hours. I, I tell you, it's sad what we're seeing today. Now listen, uh, as we read uh, in the second chapter, I'm going to skip through verse. I won't read the whole verses every time. Uh, so you can go through and read the second and third chapter. That's what we'll be going out of in Lamentations. Uh, and starting in the third verse, it says, He hath cut off his, with his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob, that means against the Israelites, like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He's talking about God. God angry with his own people. And, and I tell you, I, it, open our eyes today. Uh, he has drawn back his right hand from the enemy. He has burned against Jacob with a, like a burning fire which devoureth round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentations. On down to verse 11, it says, Mine eyes do fail with tears. The whole prophet said, My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth uh, for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children and the sucklings swo- uh, swoon in the streets of the city. Oh, how sad it was for the Israelites in that day uh, when Babylon ruined Jerusalem. God is in control. As I shared the other day, there is no power except it be ordained of God. So don't ever doubt that God is with us and God allows whatever goes on in this earth. Uh, Now it goes on and I want to read uh, verse uh, uh, on over in verse 14 a little bit. It says, Thy prophets have uh, basically at the end of it seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Uh, preachers today are preaching everything but the truth. And the only thing that's going to set any of us free is the truth. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, uh, thank God forever, uh, that the truth is in short supply today. Uh, uh, too many people are tickling ears. Too many preachers uh, uh, have their thumbs up under their collars, uh, wanting to be seen and heard uh, and wanting to make a name for themselves. Uh, and too many people are full of pride. Uh, pride goes just before a fall. And that's what was happening to the Israelites uh, uh, as they were there. And it goes on, it talks about how they were at one time the perfection of beauty, uh, the joy of the whole earth in the next verse. Uh, and down in 18 and 19, it says, uh, Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall, uh, da- the daughter of Zion, let her let tears run down like a river day, uh, and day and night. Uh, give thyself no rest. Uh, let not the apple of thine eye cease. Uh, oh, oh. Listen, we need to take heed to what thus saith the Lord. Arise, cry out in the night, 
In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of your children. It goes on. Listen, we need to pray like we've never prayed. And the old prophet was giving good advice here. Uh, I'm going to go right on down uh, in the verses uh, and in the next chapter. And I want you to especially notice chapter 3. In the second verse, uh, it says, He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Boy, it's a dark old world we're living in. Uh, and... Uh, the old prophet, uh, God was letting him see all this stuff because he was going to tell them the remedy. And there is a remedy. Yes, everything seems negative. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, God's in control. Uh, and yes, we don't understand why there's a virus and why there's all the other problems in the world and all the death and destruction uh, that's all around us. Uh, but uh, neither did the Israelites uh, because they had too many people preaching uh, prosperity uh, and riches and that kind of stuff. Uh, we're not home yet. We're not in of this world. Uh, uh, it's not about the prosperity of this world. Uh, it's about Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, whether or not he lives deep in your heart. Uh, I must go on. Uh, in uh, t- verse 10, he said, he was he was unto me as a bear lying in wait, as a lion in a secret place. Let me tell you something. I, I don't want to, to be caught by a bear down in the woods, and I'm sure you don't either, or a lion. And God is much stronger than any bear or any lion. Let me tell you today, God is a jealous God, and if he's not first in your life, I'm going to be real plain with you today. He's not in your life. Oh, preacher, I don't want to hear that. I'm going to say it anyway, because whether you want to hear it or not, it's the truth. Uh, If God's not first in your life, he's not in your life. Now, it goes on in verse, uh, skip down to verse 17. And thou hast removed my soul far from peace. I forgot prosperity. Haven't we forgot prosperity today in our country? Uh, people are focused on everything except prosperity, uh, uh, because it's not a prosperous time. Uh, And it goes on. excuse me my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humble to be the old prophet said uh, you need to practice humility this I recall in my mind therefore have I hope it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning Woo! Glory to God. His compassions are new every morning. Uh, uh, great is thy faithfulness. Uh, isn't that a wonderful verse? Uh, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Uh, the Lord is good unto them uh, uh, that wait for him uh, to the soul that seeketh him. Uh, it is good that a man should uh, both uh, uh, hope and and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, uh, you need to put your faith and trust in God. Uh, And I'm going to go on uh, just a little bit more. Uh, In uh, 31, uh, uh, it says... uh, uh, for the Lord will not cast off forever, uh, but uh, though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Uh, for he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. Uh, now, on down uh, a little bit. Uh, I'm going to skip through some verses, uh, and we'll close out with a few more words of preaching. For we have transgressed and have rebelled. Uh, uh, thou hast not pardoned. Uh, thou hast covered thyself with a cloud uh, that our prayer should not pass through. Uh, mine eye trickleth down. I'm crying out, it said in 49, uh, and ceaseth not uh, without any intermission. I don't stop crying. Uh, and on down in 55 uh, uh, through 58, uh, he said, I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Uh, thou hast heard my voice. Hide thou mine ear at th- my breathing, uh, at my cry. Uh, thou drewest me, uh, drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Uh, thou saidst, uh, fear not. Uh, thank God forever. Uh, uh, why did he say fear not me? He said, O oh Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Uh, thou hast redeemed my life. Uh, thank God forever. Uh, perfect love casteth out fear. Uh, and Jesus is love. Uh, God is love. Uh, and his perfect ways uh, and his goodness casteth out the fear of death. Uh, o oh death, where is thy sting? Uh, o oh grave, where is thy victory? Uh, I thank God that we were victorious mm-hmm. over death, hell, in the grave because Jesus is. He beat 
And regardless of any virus, uh, regardless of what comes our way, uh, if we have the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and we're truly repenting of our sins uh, and we're truly born again, uh, have you noticed, I'll say it again, uh, that every book of the Bible points to Jesus. Uh, all 66 books uh, ends up being the gospel uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and shows us the way to beat uh, darkness uh, and to come out of darkness and be in the light uh, and be the light uh, and to share the gospel with our family, our loved ones, our friends and neighbors and get them saved. If you're not living at the foot of the cross, uh, you're going to be responsible for your children dying lost. Uh, You're going to be responsible for your loved ones you want to see saved that die without Jesus. Uh, Here you are wasting your time away. Uh, uh, The Bible says to redeem the time for the days are evil. Uh, We only have this one life uh, to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, And if we waste it away in vanity and vexation of spirit, uh, thinking only about the material things we might gain, uh, thinking about uh, only about the comfort we might have, uh, not caring enough about the uh, the ones we live around uh, to cry out and lament over them and get them saved, uh, then we're going to have a lot of blood on our hands uh, and we're going to have a lot of regrets on our hands. Uh, If you have loved ones that are dying right and left and you're not going to church on a regular basis and not under the church house is empty right now, but I mean if you're not living the Christian life uh, and living a Christian life that lets its light so shine before men uh, that they see your work, good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven, uh, how are you going to get them saved? Uh, I don't want to die with an unfinished task. Uh, I want my loved ones to get saved and be spared from hell far. Uh, I want them to know that their name's in the book of life. Uh, Woo! Hallelujah! Like mine is. I know I'm saved and I'm not going to be selfish with it. Are you being selfish with your testimony, Christian? And if you're not saved today, it's time to get saved. We're living in perilous times. Jesus loves you. I lament. I cry over all the death that's around us today. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. Tears come out of my eyes. Are you saved? God bless you. We'll keep praying for you. Got another message tomorrow, Lord willing, from the next book of the Bible. Until then, this is Preacher Rick. We love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.